This is the most important slide, which I also put at the end, which is a good lesson. This is my contact information, OK? So you should write it down. Max, make sure it's available to you. I am here to help everyone that wants to start a company, wants to advance their company, wants to figure out what the heck is going on in their lives. Um, I am open to you guys reaching out to me at any time. That is my personal cell phone number, OK? So please, if you have a question and you think I can help you, just reach out to me. All right? It's that simple. It's that simple. OK, cool. Let's uh, move on. So my number one you know, goal of coming here is to help you guys. And usually, usually as the breakout section uh, just kind of showed us, what happens when um, someone needs help is that they have come across a barrier to entry for a new market. They have come across a life change. They're not sure whether they want to engage. I'm seeing some nodding heads. Engage in an action. Um, and they get kind of pacified by that conflict. And they just sit there not moving. Okay? They're not starting their student org. They're not starting their company. They're not making a decision about what company they want to go work for when they graduate. And I, hopefully, when we're done, all I want to transmit to you is we need to act. Okay, we need to make a decision about how we're going to act, and we need to act. Or else you're just going to sit there and not go anywhere, and that's the worst possible case scenario, which is something I always go back to. You have to act, or it's the worst possible case scenario. All right, next slide. I believe in this. There was a entrepreneur type line. Um, the difference between a dream and a goal uh, is when you start taking actions. Right? So lots of people have dreams about starting a company, starting an org, doing one thing or another. Right? And that's great. And you can have your own life going. Right, with your own things that you're executing on the whole time. But unless you started to put plans into action, it's just going to be this dream. All right? You're not going to be able to execute towards this goal. It's very important. Again, if you are having some internal conflict about how to make a decision to move forward, just reach out to me. We will sit down for coffee for like 15 minutes, and we'll come up with a plan. All right? I just want to make sure everyone knows that. It's a big thing to me. All right? So if you go on to the next slide for me, I appreciate it. Uh, so when I was deciding how to start Rally Energy, this caffeinated mint company in Madison, Wisconsin, um, which may not be the kind of thing you think a PhD in material science usually starts, I was looking at uh, how I would be able to launch such a company in Madison, Wisconsin. Right? You might go, why would someone start Rally Energy, this caffeinated mint company, as a PhD student in Madison, Wisconsin? And well, the truth is, while you don't look at a bunch of candy or mint or energy companies in Madison, there's still a tremendous number of resources all around you all around you. And I was taking a little out of context, but I truly believe this, that especially when you're you know, an undergraduate, you just came into the university, maybe in your sophomore, junior, senior year, you are so immersed in all these amazing opportunities and resources around you, G-Beta being one of them that we just heard about, capital entrepreneurs, et cetera, that you almost don't see them because they're just all around you. And you take them all for granted. Okay? But it's very important. I could go through an extensive list of what they all are. It'd be crazy because they kind of change every other year. You have to Google. Just Google your city and be like, I want to start entrepreneurship. Are there any accelerators, incubators in town? Are there any companies in my space that I could come join as a startup? Okay? They are everywhere. And they are full of people who honestly, it's crazy, will, like, will just put their contact information on these slides. I'm sure it's about to go public to something. And people can reach out to you. Reach out to me. If you don't reach out to me, it is completely on you. And then if I hear through Grapevine that you're still like persevering on a decision through Max, I'm going to find you. And we're going to make a decision. Okay, who thinks they're not going to make a decision? You were shaking your head. You're not making a decision yet? We're going to make a decision, right? <laughs> right? His eyes are a little crazy, but then I think we're getting there. Okay? So there are tons of resources. We don't have to go through them all. The extensive list. But the thing is, even your internet right now is one of those resources. You Google it. You Google your town and go, what am I going to do? So for me, for example, next slide, please. I usually started off thinking that my resources were, this is the state of Wisconsin in the bottom left. Just my friends and my family, my friends you know, in town, that's my cohort of people. Those are my resources. That's how I'm going to make my decision about what company I'm going to launch or how I'm going to launch my company. And it was really important for me to realize, no, it's not just that. You know, I'm part of this university. There's amazing resources at the university, which we can get into, that have shaped who I've become, um, Wharf being one of them and some other places. And there's tons of resources that you can reach out to at the university itself. Again, just Google, University of Wisconsin. Caffeinated mints, confectionery, whatever you want to do. We can get into it. And you'll see that there are tons of resources here at the university. And a lot of people, I think, in this room will agree with that. Because if you think about yourself as a student here, usually at the university, you, you start knitting that together. A little bit more broadly, like for capital entrepreneurs, you're also a member of the city. And there are amazing resources in the city 
to help you start your organization and start your company. All right? It's simply a Google search away. I kid you not. Listing them would make no sense because there's new ones coming up every day. If you type in the kind of thing you're interested in, Madison, Wisconsin, you're going to find some kind of company or organization that has worked in that space or worked in a peripheral space. Just pick up the phone and call those people. Email them. If you have a moment of hesitation about action, you call my number. I will, I will cold call them for you. I don't care. I do that all the time. It's weird, but it just, we just take action and move forward. Okay, I promise you, it's that easy. The other person on the, other, on the line is going to be as surprised that you usually just call them. And like, oh, cool, let's meet up. Let's figure out what's going on. How can I help you start your org? How can I help you maybe access funding? How can I help you get your product into market? Okay? But a lot of people still even think about that. Like, okay, you know, Madison, Wisconsin, that's still my community. I get it. Let's get a little broader. Wisconsin. All right? Wisconsin in general, maybe Midwest in general. A lot of people don't, when they're here and as a student, they don't think about that connection to the community. Unless it's like through sports. But that's not true. So for Rally Energy, or a caffeinated mint company, you might think food industry. Midwest is huge in food. Okay, one of the strategic decisions I made when we were starting Rally was to start it here because there's so much history and large, large industry in food in the Midwest. This company is connected beyond our borders, beyond the, beyond the university, beyond the state to the Midwest. I knew that when I started on day one, that that kind of resource is available. Okay? You can then, of course, start thinking about your markets as the country, and then, of course, as the, everything's trending towards the entire world with the internet. Okay? That you can sell things across borders throughout the world, you can advertise to people across the world, but that there are organizations throughout the world that can help other organizations around the world. They're a phone call away. It sounds weird. There's a little phone call. Everyone emails. Just call those people. Just call them. You don't know what to say. You'll start like mumbling through it and figuring it out along the way. It's crazy, but it's real. If you hesitate, you call my number. Then together, we call them. I swear to God, that's what we're going to do. Okay? There's no excuse for inaction whatsoever. So you can obviously use this when you think about your company. But you can think about this in life if you're not thinking about building your company today. Maybe you're thinking about student org or your career outside you know, the university, not as an entrepreneur. So for me, I was really interested in patenting. I was interested in inventing different consumer products. So intellectual property, to me personally, became very important. Okay? How could I protect my idea? And usually at that point, I think, well, I don't know any patent lawyers. I don't know any trademark lawyers. I don't know what to do in this case. And then give up. That's what a lot of people do. I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll call a friend of a family and I'll figure out what to do. But if you Google University of Wisconsin intellectual property, you're going to find out that we have like a rock star intellectual property defender in the state who's sworn to like defend the university against Intel, Apple, and everyone else. I don't know if you're to bleep that out of this video. But anyway, it happens. Google it. And they are there also to support you and teach you about intellectual property. It was a Google away from, I'm not going to learn anything about intellectual property. I'm not a lawyer. To, there's someone who's going to take you in and teach you about everything about intellectual property. OK? It's really just one action away from sometimes exactly what you're looking for. I promise you. So here, again, you know, Nia had already spoken to it. There's a lot of internships or companies that you can join. And those are just so plentiful. We don't need to go into the details of which ones those would be. But another thing that's uh, plentiful around here, used to be more, and in general, we hope there's more, is for competitions. Okay, so I'm very big on competitions. Um, everyone here knows that there's student competitions that you can join at the University of Wisconsin, I hope. If you don't, that's okay. Now you do. No excuse. Do you know that you can join competitions at other universities as a student at UW? And you can compete with those students for money. Do you know there's business plan competitions that are not even wed to specific universities that you can join? I'm seeing a lot of like, what? Yes, there's money out there that you can compete for that's not even sworn to the students at a particular university, and you can win that money away from them for UW. Go. All right? We can do that. But you might go, why am I going to enter that competition? I get that a lot. Like, oh, if I enter that competition, I might lose. I don't really want to engage in that experience because I got so many other things going on. I hear that all the time. Okay? Well, here's the deal business competitions are awesome. There's a lot of money that usually they have to give away to a certain number of teams. And there's judges at those competitions. Okay? Usually people who are, have ran successful companies in that space, or they invest in companies in that space, and they're there. And they have to be there. Okay? So there's three decisions, when you, there's three decisions you can make when you're going to join a, join a competition. Either you don't join it, you join it and you lose, or you join it and you win. 
all right? And you're thinking about when if I join it and I win, there's judges and there's money, right, that I could get. And if I don't, I'm going to lose. So let's go through these cases. What happens if I don't join the business plan competition? What is the end result if I don't join the business plan competition? You don't win. You don't win. So you're probably sitting there watching Netflix, right? Something like that. All right? That's pretty simple. You sit there, you learn nothing, you got no exposure, you got no money. Nada. What if you compete and you lose? You get exposure and experience. Exposure, experience. That's good. Okay. You develop your product probably a little bit. You're, you have an impetus, a fire under your ass to start working on your product. Okay. You meet people like who are at this event who also want to build cool shit. That's awesome. That's actually one of the biggest resources you walk away with. Can you think of something else? You get comments from the judges, probably. Comments. Beautiful. So you find out why maybe your product does or does not work, right? Why should you spend any more time on it, right? Is there anything else that you can think of that you get from it? Just potential clients, customer relations. Customer relations. Knowledge. What about internally? Free internally. <laughs> what was that? Three fifth? Free food. Three food? That's always a plus. <laughs> yeah, that's Okay, so you've made some progress in your company, all these other things, but as an individual who wants to build your company one day, build a company one day, participate in another company and build value, you have built confidence in yourself to take that step, start building your company or product in a certain direction, stand up in front of judges, get critiqued. These are not, you know, if it's not money, it's not losing. These are huge, valuable things that pay into the most valuable thing, which is you going forward. Okay, it's tremendously valuable. So you don't compete, you get nothing. nothing. You compete and you lose, you get a bunch of stuff we just put. And if you compete and you win, you basically got all that other stuff we just talked about and money, money plus a little media exposure. It's cool, you can keep pivoting that off. Okay? So basically, this is winning, basically. You've already gotten tons of value. This one's a value plus a little bit of money. Maybe it's not even that much money. And this just sucks. Okay? So the only one that looks like you lost to me, is when you don't compete at all. Next slide. OK. Again. OK, cool. So if you don't compete, you lost. You're sitting here, not entering the competition. You lost. It's the worst possible case scenario you can engage in. OK? Anytime you're thinking about taking an action, just remember that. Sitting there watching Netflix was the worst possible case scenario you could have engaged in. <laughs> Okay? And another part of this, just to take the little actions, are a lot of competitions have you like a month out, apply. Like, oh, you have to, you have to you know, engage, you have to send in your name or your company or whatever. Always do that. Always, it's like always be closing. Always do that. Because if it comes to the competition time, you didn't enter, you can't compete. So at least take the five minutes that's required to enter any competition you possibly can and decide later whether you want to compete at all. Okay? Because not doing anything is the only situation where you've completely lost. You're already losing. Just you have to do something to maybe win. Okay? All right, let's, I know we have some time issue here. So sometimes I hear um, people when they are going to enter a competition, they think, I have so many ideas, I even heard this today, I have so many ideas, I just don't know what to focus on. I really don't know what to focus on. I don't think that with all the things I'm balancing in my life right now, I can compete. Well, we've already talked about the fact that if you do not enter the competition, you've already lost, all right? And besides that, what we need to do is just focus on your priorities, all right? So if you have all these things going on in your life, but we've already talked about all the things you can get when you win this competition, are any of those as valuable as those things that we get when, we, when we're going to win the competition? When we're going to lose the competition, but we entered? Because everyone thinks, I mean, we're going to win or lose. There's this middle place that's amazing that you always get when you enter that competition. So what in your life, like maybe the Netflix show that you don't have to watch today. I'm sorry, I'm beating you up. It's cool. All right. <laughs> Spencer, right? I was like, so you, you don't, right? Okay. You don't, what is going on in your life, like the Netflix show that you can watch later, that you can just put off and enter this competition and work on some idea? Okay? There's lots of things like that. And almost everyone doesn't engage in this because they think, if I'm not winning, and then oh, there's so much, if I didn't win that last thing with the money, it, all of it wasn't worth it. And it's clearly not the case. It's not the case at all. There's so much value to be gotten. Okay? So just figure out which of those priorities, like Netflix, to chill, that you can put off and we can focus on competing in the competition. With that in mind, I try to help because there are lots of ideas that people have. You guys are very creative people about what you might want to enter the competition with. 
Okay? So I have a little rubric that I use personally when I thought about what kind of competition to enter or what uh, business to launch. And that would be the next slide. Um, and what, what I did is I thought, well, what is it going to take to launch a company? You're going to need to be like, persistent as hell. You need to work harder than you ever heard in your life. You're going to need to be really strategic with decision making. Right? We know that's true. For you to compete and win as a company growing against competition, that's going to be true. So if I need to decide what kind of company I'm going to launch, I should just apply that kind of mentality to the decision process about what kind of company to launch. So what I did was, I said, what are the two most valuable things to me right now? It's capital, what kind of money I've been able to save as a meager grad student, and how much time do I have? Okay, Capital and time, very important metrics. I started taking all those ideas I thought were awesome, that I wanted to one day launch a company with, and I started to populate this graph. Right? So over here, there might be some, well, it takes a little bit of time, and maybe it, so it's kind of some app I want to build that I could teach myself a little bit more programming than I currently know. I could build it. It's not a huge opportunity. Maybe it's a, it's a nice lifestyle business. There's other opportunities that take a long time, and maybe our medium capital that might have been, or a lot of time in medium capital that might have been like a social network back in the day when people didn't understand social networks. All right? There are other opportunities that maybe are a small amount of time and a, and a small amount of capital as a payoff, right? A little t-shirt business you could throw together that you've always wanted to launch, just start populating this space with your ideas. Think about them. One of the most important things is that you actually have to take pen to paper and write these things down. What is the market size for that idea? How long is it going to take me to launch this business? Right? How much capital is going to be required? Let's do another one. And you'll end up with something, maybe you only have two ideas, maybe you have 500. You end up with something like this. Now, how is this not useful to you? You had so many ideas dancing in your head, pulling on your emotions left and right, okay, that you couldn't make a competent decision for your life of you. Okay? And now, at least, you can say, well, this idea that I really, really love and think is awesome, it's going to take me, on average, if I look at the market, like 14 years to get to break even or something. Okay? Which is maybe a fine thing you want to do, but also there's another business that I would like to launch on, a business, on an idea that I like a lot, where I can work on it for three years and statistically break even. And maybe that's something I'm more interested in. Now you get to look at that. And measure your ideas versus each other and think about what kind of company or product you want to launch in these competitions. All right? Very helpful if you are in stasis about what kind of, what kind of company or product to launch, at least in my experience. All right? As soon as you start talking to someone who's like emotionally like passive about what to do, and you start write, you know, taking pen to paper and putting numbers behind things, it's just amazing how clearly certain things become. Certain things they are super passionate about, they may find out like once you distill everything down, it's like the worst business opportunity. But they're incredibly passionate about it, so much more than everything else. They don't care, and they just know now that they want to make that decision. They know now in their bones they want to make that decision. They're not distracted by well, what is the capital cost? They know now. And there's other people that thought that you know, this idea looks exciting, but they're not really into it, or it's too much capital. They can immediately now just discount it and not care about it because they can just see this landscape of ideas that they want to build. Okay, so if you feel like you're unable to make a decision. Do that kind of thing. An important thing to uh, think about here, though, is that none of this stuff is actually static. Over time, hopefully, technology is making. So, if you thought of an idea like 10 years ago, hopefully, everything is taking less time to build now. It requires less capital. Some things don't, but some, most things do, hopefully. But so remember, if you haven't looked at an idea in a while and you've made a graph like this, things have moved around. So, the assumptions in the market have moved around. New technology for launching the product, the market size has changed, the competition is different. All this stuff has changed. Okay, so you gotta keep that in mind, but don't worry because next slide, there's always new opportunities. I promise, it's crazy. Especially if you're a really creative person, who and the people I was talking about talking with today, they're full of ideas and passion. Okay, you guys are gonna keep coming up with new organizations and companies that you want to launch one day. I can tell. So this is always just an incredibly populated space all the time, all the time. But don't let that pacify you. Put it on you know two axes. Get some metrics. Make a decision. Take action after one of those companies. Definitely, absolutely compete in the competition. Absolutely compete in the competitions. You have nothing to lose except literally if you just sit there and don't do anything. That's the only time you're losing. Okay? And then for the internship opportunities, if you're not sure which kind of company you want to launch, you're not sure that you want to <laughs> perk up over there, you're not sure that you want to launch your own company, absolutely. Google the companies or talk to me about, she's waving, about what, you know, what you're interested in. Just Google Madison, Wisconsin company, blockchain, right? whatever it is. And you, the next second, you're either emailing that person, calling that person, or you're calling me. 
Or if I hear it through the if I hear it through the chain, not the blockchain, if I hear the chain, I'm calling you. Okay, because we're going to take action. Honestly. Thanks, next slide. This is my contact information again. Please reach out. I just want to help you. I just want to help you. Okay? Thanks. Thank you.